ok. So, first let us we need to talk of informational inferiority ok, informational inferior or informationally inferior games. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had seen it before, but I had to, if you remember what I had to, um, um, so for we saw it in the, yes, so we have seen this before, we saw it in the case of the, um, the, the quantity competition, where the equilibrium, the static Nash equilibrium was also a, a Nash equilibrium of, uh, of this game, right, of the dynamic game, that we saw it there. We, we also kind of saw it in this in the L1, L2, R1, R2 game uh, and uh, over there and it, uh, it had the, um, but over there what I had to do is I had to sort of introduce those fake actions because after L player 1 played L1 there was nothing for player 2 to do. So, this was this we have seen elements of this before, yes. I should also let us let us all another thing to point out here actually before I get to in informational inferiority. Can you tell me what are the what, what is the payoff in this uh, in the in the start equilibrium? What are what are players getting? So, player 1 is getting 0 and player 2 is getting minus 1, right. So, Whereas in the earlier game, player 1 was getting minus 1 and player 2 was getting 0, right. So, you can see that these two, firstly, the second, the, the first equilibrium, uh, the, the earlier equilibrium that we calculated, we calculated in, you know, based on a certain logic and it gave, it gave the player 1 this particular payoff. But there is also this other equilibrium which comes from the inferior game and in that game, player 2 is actually get, is, be, is being better off, okay. Now, this is, this happened in an earlier example also, this is, it is not a general rule that you know, uh, being, uh, forgetting information or, or sort of ignoring, in, not forgetting, ignoring information actually benefits a player, there is no such rule. But here is again a case where such a thing is actually happening, where lack of information or in other words not having this information actually is beneficial for that player, okay, because this is, this is the game that player 2 would have, player 2 would have been part of if he did not have this information. This would be the simultaneous move game, but the resulting, the payoff that he gets in the resulting game is actually, uh, is actually better because he is getting minus 1 here and in as compared to 0 here, ok, alright, ok, yeah. No, 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 no. So, that is e e. So, he is not changing his strategy. This is another equilibrium, ok. These are two potential outcomes of the game. One outcome is that player 1 plays R1 and player 2 plays gamma 2, 3. The other outcome is player 1 plays L1 and player, player 2 plays gamma 2, 1. Okay, these are two different outcomes. Now, uh, about what Shashank said, whether player 1's information has changed, see there are two different pieces of information. I mentioned this earlier also in the, see one is information which is about the game, okay, about the structure of the game. That has changed, that if you look at this game compared and compare that with this one, these are obviously the, the two games are different, okay. That is, that is, that is the case, but the point is that this is an equilibrium of, of this game, ok. So, so it is not, uh, it is, it also happens to be mathematically the case that it, it also can be like, uh, is basically mapped to an equilibrium from an inferior game, that is, that is one, that is one point. The other thing that, so, but as far as, you know, uh, if you want to compare in, uh, information that is present to a, that is available to a player during gameplay. That is the one that is different in two, in between the two games for player two. For player one, during the gameplay, there is no change in information, okay. For player one, he still starts with null information in both games. Player two just has lesser information here, 
So, when we talk of informational inferiority and so on, right, this is about what, do, what players know intra game during the gameplay. Okay. So, first uh, for, for this, you need to uh, suppose you have two partitions okay, of a set. So, let us take a set S and suppose there are two partitions. Yeah, and uh, let us call this part these partitions uh, P1 and P2. So, these are partitions of S. Okay. Now, when do we say that P1 is finer than P2? Every set in P2. Okay. So, so, we say P1 is finer than P2 if every element of P1 is a subset of an element of P2. So, let us take this set S and I have suppose partitioned it in, in this kind of way to get um, let us say this is this black partition is say P2 then P1 then P1 is a finer version of this. So, which what this means is that if you take any element of P1 it is always contained completely in some element of P2. Okay. So, which means something like this. This here is a partition, a finer partition. Clear? Now, this is, uh, you, uh, many people make this mistake, um, I do not know if I want to just talk about it, but you, you see, you, you, many people make the mistake that of defining it the other way around. If every element of P2 contains an element of P1, that is not the same, uh, same, right. So, essentially what you need is when you want P1 to be finer than P2, it has to be that whatever information you get in P1, okay, uh, whenever you have, uh, whenever you, uh, whatever information you have in P1 helps you also conclude the same information in P2, okay. Uh, so, say helps you also conclude what you had in P2. Is this clear? So, which means that P1 is, is, is a more specific version as compared to P2. Okay, it gives you sharper, finer information than P2. Now, if you take the, the important thing therefore is that you cannot have situations like this. You cannot have situations where let us say I will just write this blue one is P2, uh, P1. So, if you cannot have a situation where a set like this of P1 is stretching across two sets of P2, that is not allowed because then then there will be you know there uh, I mean there is some information that was there in P2 which is not present necessarily in P1. Okay. So, everything that you knew in P2 is also known to you in P1. Okay. So, that is effectively the point. Okay. So, so now what you can do is, uh, so if you suppose you have a single act game. Suppose you have a single act game, let us say denoted 1. Okay. Now, what you can do is create from it. Suppose you have a single act game 1. Okay. Now, when would you say that another single act game 2? Okay. When would you say that when is a single act game 2? informationally inferior
informationally inferior to 1. So, which is the one that has fine? So, firstly, so do you have say a single ad game 1 and another single ad game 2? When do you say that 2 is informationally inferior to 1? Information set is a is an element of the partition. Um, it is just called the, the whole thing is a player set partitioned into information sets. Uh, no, I, I so consider two. So, I had a notation for this, I do not remember. Did I have ni just check ni or ii, I think, huh? for information set of information sets? of player i yeah yeah so we can do you can use that notation okay so consider two single act games uh, i'll just call them um, a and b okay Def defined on the same game tree with with the same player sets okay so you have two single act games a and b that are defined on the same game tree and they have the same player sets okay if the player sets are different it doesn't make sense to talk of uh, compare inf them informationally because the the nodes at which the players are playing are are themselves going to be uh, different, right? So the player sets are uh, are the same. The tree is the same, okay? Which and consequently payoffs and all that are also the same. The only thing that is going to be different is is the information sets across the players, okay? So let I A I and I A B be the set of information sets of player i in games a and b okay so then we say A is informationally inferior to B if for all for all I and N and and for all eta I B in I I B there exists an eta I A in I I A such that eta I B is a subset of eta I A. Okay, so we say uh, consider two single act games A and B defined on on the same game tree with same uh, player sets. And let these be the, let I um, I I A and I I B be the information sets of player I in it. Okay, in games A and B, we say A is informationally inferior uh, to B if for all I in N that means for every player, and uh, you have that the information the the info, uh, the set of information sets as a partition of his of player I's player set is in B is finer than that in A, okay. B has a finer information partition, okay, all right. So, suppose now you have two uh, games like this A and B, A is uh, informationally inferior to B. Now, what can you say about the strategy sets of a player? Which game would have more strategies? The superior one, right? The richer one will have more strategies, obviously, because he has more information sets there. He has more options. He has more options there. So play. So uh, so game B will always. So for every player, he'll have more strategies in game B than he would have in uh, than he would have in game A. 
Now, one one thing here also remember that when we are talking of um, another, okay, I forgot to mention this point. See, when we are talking of two games on the same game tree and one is, inf uh, you know, inferior compared to the other. Okay. What this means is that the inferior game, you can say, has in some, in some sense been formed by joining together information sets of the richer game, just like we did, just like we had here, right. This information set was created out of two information sets from a richer game. So, but you may, it may not always be possible, you cannot just always just arbitrarily combine information sets because to begin with you need to have the same set of actions at each, in, at each node in each information set, otherwise it is not even feasible to combine them. So, it is possible that you do not have inform, inferior games at all. So, for example, here in this case, suppose just imagine there was Imagine there was another, you know, another action here. Let us say at this node, suppose there was another action to, for this player. Then I could not put, I cannot combine these two into one information set. Because then it would violate uh, the definition of, uh, of an information set, right. I cannot part, I cannot put these two in the same information set. So, for me to get an informationally inferior game, I need to have nodes like that, that can be combined into one information set, okay. So, that is, that is, that is one requirement. So, the way we define therefore, informationally inferior games is, we do not simply say that we, you put together combined information sets. We start with two games and we say one is inferior to the other, if, if the information sets follow this property, that there is this, that the partition in one is richer than the partition in the other, okay. All right. Now, now if you uh, now that so if B has is uh, is is superior as compared to A, then for every player there are more strategies than B than as compared to A. Okay. Can you say more than actually not only the number of strategies? What can you say something more? Yeah. Yeah. So. Every so so the space of strategies is different now because after all strategies are going to be mappings from information sets to actions and information sets themselves have changed, but because these information sets have gotten combined like this, right? You can basically do the following: you can every strategy in their in the inferior game has an you can say has a equivalent strategy in the richer game. So the inferior game basically involves ignoring information. So, this this particular one, this strategy where you, where the player 2 played L2, we said was essentially this strategy, right, where he was playing gamma 2 1, which was the constant strategy here. Here he was playing L2 as a, um, as an action and there was only one information set. Here he was playing L2 and L2 at the two information set, but they were, they were equivalent in the sense that they led to the same game, same path through the game tree, okay. So, uh, yeah, so that is a, so it should lead to the same history, the same game, so it should lead to the same path. For assuming all, uh, for every strategy of the other players, you should have, it. The, the path that it generates should be the same. Then the two strategies are equivalent. So, so, so I mean we define, so if you go to this sort of level, right, I mean you have to get physics uh, into it, essentially you have to talk of the history, time evolution, what is the, what is the exact sequence of events and then talk in terms of that. So, that because the game tree records the entire history of the game. So, you have to, you know, go in that kind of almost thermodynamic like type language. So, notice that if A is informationally inferior to B, then we have, then for all players I, we will have this property that if I take the set of strategies of player i in game a, I will just put this in quotes, it is, 
it is a subset of the set of strategies that player I has in game B. Okay. And this, this thing, this is in quotes because I, uh, you know, I technically you can't, but you, ca you can map them at, as an equivalent strategy in play in game B. Okay, so that's that's why this is in quotes. Okay, all right. So, so now let's write out the theorem. Let A be an n person. So, let A be an n person single act game that is informationally inferior to another single act game B. Okay. So, what is being presumed here therefore, is that these two games are on the same game tree, they have the same player sets, same payoffs and so on. Okay. Except that now A is informationally inferior to B. Then first any Nash equilibrium of A also constitutes a Nash equilibrium of B. And second, second is this observation that we had here. See, when we looked at this, you remember we, I just looked at, I, what was this matrix, where did we get this matrix from? This matrix just came from the first two columns of, from here, right? So, now, if, if I, if I look at a, uh, a, a, if I, if I, see this this game and I find there is this equilibrium here and, and I look at this equilibrium and say well well this equilibrium actually involves player 1 playing L1 and player 2 playing a constant strategy L2 at each information set. Well if in that case I can actually say that well this strategy L2 is actually implementable also in an inferior game right. This one gamma 2, 3 is not implementable in the inferior game because it requires player 2 to change its action based on the information. Whereas, this strategy is implementable in the inferior game. From this itself, I should be able to conclude that this is in fact an, an equilibrium of the inferior game. Okay? So, if you have a strategy like this, if you have a Nash equilibrium like this, in which th the strategies of the players are actually subsets are, are actually elements of the strategy set of an inferior game. Okay? So, the st you, have a g you have a richer game, you find its Nash equilibrium and that Nash equilibrium has the property that the strategies are in fact strategies of that are implementable in an inferior game, then this equilibrium is also an equilibrium of the inferior game. So, this is essentially a converse result. Okay? So, every equilibrium of the inferior game does carry over. Conversely, if you find an equilibrium in the richer game whose strategies are implementable in the inferior game for every player, then it is also an equilibrium in the in the inferior in the inferior game. Okay. So if gamma 1 star to gamma n star is a Nash equilibrium of the richer game B such that gamma i star belongs to gamma i a for all i. Then gamma 1 star to gamma n star is an Nash equilibrium of a. Okay. All right. So, so we will prove this now today. So, can you tell me what would be the logic? Why, why is it that an equilibrium of an inferior game carries over as an equilibrium in the richer game? No, no, no. See, remember, it is, it is B. So, that will help you prove 2, okay, but not 1. So, 2 is trivial in that sense because B has fewer strategies, uh, has, uh, B has more strategies 
than uh, so the richer game has more strategies okay because of this subset relation that i wrote here it has to be so b is b is uh, every player has more strategies in b so if a strategy is optimal for that player over a larger set it will be optimal also over a smaller set only thing we need to check is if it's available in the smaller set okay this is something we have seen before also you know in the dominance and so on okay but why is the why is one true see we basically what you so so the idea is essentially this see player in in the in the inferior game a player is ignoring information okay and he is picking some strategy and that turns out to be the best response given what the others are playing okay now if the question is is this so the entire profile of strategies is available in the richer game also the question is is this is there a better response available in the richer game if so if there was a better response in the richer game then this this one would not be the best response in the richer game is this clear so you take so let's take two players for simplicity player 1 player 2 player 2 is playing a strategy in the inferior game okay in response to what player 1 player 1 has played okay now move to now both these strategies can be ported to the richer game okay they are available as strategies in the richer game now in the richer game player 2 say has uh, has now player 2 has potentially more strategies in the richer game now with these additional options does he have a better response than what he was playing earlier that's essentially what we need to show because if he has a better response then this equilibrium property is lost right so can you argue that there cannot be a better response yeah so for again it's a response so it's for uh, given what the others are playing why but why can't, so with so he has more options now why can't he do better no no <laughs> yeah yeah so there is always a that yeah yeah of course this gets copied that's correct so uh, but uh, the point is see the question is this stuff here this matrix comes up here right question is see player 2 now has more options here so ye, ye, this additional stuff why is it useless okay so good good so so actually this is this is this is actually the hint the see basically you what you are seeing here is that this stuff gets copied here the entire matrix doesn't get entire two columns don't get copied but if you see these two get repeated what does this mean that suppose there was something better here okay suppose there was a strategy which was better okay. what would that strategy do that means it what it would do is at some information set okay a player would take a different action than he was taking at the in in the inferior game right in the inferior game he was taking some action at each information set now at there is now those informations in the richer game the information sets are split up he has some additional information and with the in the basis of that additional information he is now taking a different action somewhere but the point is that this is a single act game okay so what happens therefore is that if he was taking a different action there along that particular path then he could have committed to that action even with even in the inferior game because that that taking that constant action was available to him over there also so he could have if the in whatever 
you know no, new strategy you have could have been implemented as a constant strategy in the in the in the inferior game and he would, he and he would he could and he would then you know in retrospect basically have played what what would have uh, you, uh, you know, whatever would have been more beneficial to him in retrospect, he could have just simply played that in the in the inferior game. Okay, so let's just let's just do this formally. So, so suppose, so actually the second one is trivial. So I'll just focus on the first one. The first we need to show this, right? So let gamma one star to gamma n star be. A, Nash equilibrium of A. Yeah. Of course, of course. In general, that is exactly the point. So, richer game will have many more Nash equilibria. Okay. In general, it will have. So, it will have all these uh, uh, things that it inherits from inferior games, but it will have Nash equilibria of its own, which are not present in inferior games. Okay. Not for sure, obviously, yeah, but in general that it will because you can always have, uh, you know, pathological cases like that, but in general it will, okay. So, in fact, this is one of the arguments people use for eliminating, uh, um, you know, threat type equilibria, saying that threat equilibria are actually just, you know, fake equilibria, they are coming up from the, they are in fact equilibria of an inferior game that just happened to show up here, okay. So, uh, because, see, the, essentially the, 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 you can say the sort of the quintessential equilibrium of the dynamic game is the one that uses all its information. Everything else is an equilibrium in fact of a inferior game which is just happening, it is just showing up here because of the, you know, way we have defined the equilibrium. Yeah. So, the other equilibrium which is uh, sort of present in both games, we saw it before as well. Hmm. You can say threatening, I mean, yeah, dip, depending on the cost function, that is right, yeah. So, uh, so, we said that well, that could also be a resolution. But, yeah. Uh, so, but one can define something called a rational resolution in a dynamic game, which is a Nash equilibrium which does not violate. So, that is what is called subgame perfectness. So, that is essentially then a, a game is called, uh, an equilibrium is called subgame perfect if it is, if it induces an equilibrium an equilibrium on every subgame. Okay. So, this one here, this equilibrium here is subgame perfect because what it does is on every subgame, it is in fact an equilibrium. So, it is an equilibrium on this subgame and also on this subgame. So, that is a, that's a, a way of refining equilibria. That is also one argument. Yeah, subgame needs to be defined. I have to first define uh, ex, an, a sub-extensive form, and a sub-extensive form is one where the you know the information sets don't cross across across subtrees. So you take subtrees, and the, but the information sets should not cross across them. Then it is a subgame, a sub-extensive form, and then that comprises of subgames and so on. Okay. So let uh, gamma one star to gamma n star be a Nash equilibrium of A. And so we ha we have of course that gamma i star belongs to capital gamma i b because it's a it is present in the uh, it's present as a strategy in the richer game. Okay, now assume let's go by contradiction. So now assume that gamma one star to gamma n star is not a Nash equilibrium of of P, which means there exists player I in N, okay, and a gamma I hat, let's say, in uh, gamma I B, such that if you look at this fellow gamma hat i comma gamma minus i star this is better than gamma i star comma gamma minus i star okay so gamma hat i is better 
than gamma uh, gamma i star which is what he was playing in the Nash equilibrium of of the inferior game ok. If you remember what I told you, if I give you an n tuple of strategies or give you a strategy profile, it defines for me a unique path in the tree. It is starting from the root to a particular leaf node. So, this now is a defines a path for me right this uh, this uh, profile defines for me a path ok. So, this is here gamma hat i comma gamma minus i star defines a path and it is a, a path in in the richer game b. Now, so since this defines for me a path and I said this is a single act game which means that this path has to intersect the information uh, the player set of each player at most once ok. Now, in this case player i is actually shifting and benefiting. So, he is played along this path. He has in fact played along this path. If he was not playing along this path, there is no way his, his, uh, his shift would have mattered right. So, which means that there exists a unique information set the i b in i i b intersecting. So, there is this particular path that that is that is passing and it has to intersect player i's information set. So, uh, some information set of player i and it and only in fact exactly one information set of player i because it is a single act game ok. So, b is the richer game right. So, if every information set in b is a subset of some information set in game a right. The richer one is a subset of some uh, something in the in the coarser one in right. So, which means that there is an information set in game uh, game A which is a superset of eta i b since A is inferior to b inferior to b there exists an eta i a in i i a. So, there is an information set of player i in game a such that eta i b is a is a subset of this right. So, there is a, a, a larger set. So, basically eta i b is so you have this situation where you have a information set eta i b and that is in fact contained completely in another information set uh, eta uh, eta i a. Okay, so maybe I'll just draw this here. So this is, and this is in a. So this guy here is eta i b, and uh, this is eta i a. Mm -hmm. So so now the game has come to this path ok come through this path in fact it has come through a specific node here right and at that node and and in particular at that information set player player i chose to take a uh, chose to take a different action than ga what gamma i star was telling him to take right and that is how you have got gamma i hat ok. So, now what I can do is I can define a gamma i tilde which is same as gamma i star everywhere else, but on this information set that means on eta i a yeah sorry here he has more information. So, what he yeah so yeah so what I yes so what I can do is define a gamma i uh, uh, gamma tilde. So, define a gamma i tilde gamma i tilde which is going to be the same as gamma i star everywhere else, but on eta i a ok it replicates the action that I took on in gamma i hat correct. So, here suppose at this node I was taking an action suppose I was taking an action here suppose uh, you know an action L suppose here ok in, in gamma so gamma hat i tells me to take action gamma hat i in of eta i b 
this tells me to take action L. Whereas gamma star was take, asking me to tell, take action something else. Let's see. Okay. So gamma i star was asking me to take this action. gamma i star of now what i can do is this this action l is also available at eta i a because eta i a is a larger information set than eta i b so all the actions that are available at every node in uh, eta i b are also available as actions everywhere else in eta i b eta i a okay because it's form it's an inferior one so, R is also available there. So, I can define a gamma tilde that basically does this. It is the same as gamma i star on the rest of the tree. All these other paths here, it just does same as what gamma i star was doing. But when it comes to this one, it sees that oh, R was better. So, let me just play R. Okay. So, on this information set here, basically on this information set, it plays R at every node in this information set. Now, look at the path that gamma tilde i along with minus gamma minus i star is that uh, what is the path that I am going to get with gamma tilde i and gamma minus i star. Basically, see, this is a single act game. So, all the players that have played before me are present in minus i. So, I will still come to this same node. The game will still come to this node itself. At this node earlier instead of where I was taking L, now I will take R, right? And thereafter that is my turn to play, after that I do not get to play, it is a single act game. And the game then proceeds again based on what minus I star is doing. And so what will happen therefore, I will get the same payoff as I would get in gamma hat I from gamma tilde, but gamma tilde is present as a strategy in the inferior game. Gamma hat i was a strategy in the richer game. Okay, It was making use of this information and refining the action. But that refined action I can just take blindly across the entire information set eta i. Okay? And it leads to the same path and it will give me the same cost. Player i gets the same cost. So in short, what we get is a contradiction that i the gamma star could not have also been an equilibrium. Because there is a better strategy even in the earlier game, gamma tilde. There is a better strategy gamma tilde i for the player i in even in the even in the game where we started off with, and that's your contradiction. Yeah. So uh, no, because then you'll have to make them into a team. The the point is the no 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 no. It's it's not the same. Because you have to respect the, uh, so a team of n players each having different information is not the same as one player. No, it will, it will, you can potentially, but it will become a very messy thing. Essentially, every player acting distinctly will become a different player. But then they have, so it becomes a team versus team type of uh, setting. Okay. okay, so here is therefore the, so let us write out the construction of okay, gamma, so gamma tilde i, okay, so let me write this node, right, this node where we reach, let us call this node, uh, let us call this node x, okay, x is the node intersecting this path, this is that node, okay. So eta i a is, so x actually belongs to eta i. Okay, so now gamma tilde i is defined in this way. So gamma tilde i is equal to for eta i is equal to gamma star i for all eta i uh, not equal to eta i a and uh, tilde i at eta i a actually takes the same action as gamma hat i took at eta i b. This implies the, if you take the cost 
of gamma tilde comma gamma minus i gamma minus i star that is equal to the cos 2 player i of from gamma hat i comma gamma minus i star and this guy is in fact strictly less than gamma i star comma gamma minus i star. contradiction to gamma so it, this contradicts that uh, this is an Nash equilibrium of A which means that This is also an Nash equilibrium of B. Okay, so that's effectively the uh, the idea. Okay, so once again, the point is, upon reaching X, if you had a better action with additional information, then you could have taken that action even without the information, and you would have had the same path and the same cost. That's basically the point. Okay, so this thing, this thing, right? If where where, uh, this 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 thing where the player in retrospect is essentially if he had the information I would have played differently that is in fact uh, being uh, incorporated as as a constant action even when you did not have the information and because it is a single act game the whole thing follows through. Actually a fact like this is also true for multi act games it is just much more messier to show ok. And there you have to, uh, you know, you have to allow for all kinds of calculations where, you know, players forget and this and that. So, so we will not do that. But this is, this, this is true in general that equilibria of inferior games will carry over as equilibria of, of richer games uh, regardless of what the, uh, you know, how many times players play, okay, alright.